Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 2. Today we have got two games for you against Bury and Boston United in League 2. Also, is there something you notice on this page? Just something that's maybe quite interesting that might make me personally very, very happy? That's right. Your boy's a legend at Lincoln United. Finally, I mean, I do deserve it. Um, I thought I should have had it earlier on, if I'm honest with you. But four promotions and an FA Trophy is just about enough to uh, warrant being a legend of a club. So I'm very happy about that. Hopefully, at some point, you know, we've got a new stadium on the way already. And it is called the Lincoln United Stadium. There is potential to have another one further down the line. If we get to, like, Champions League, for example, we might get another stadium then. And maybe then it'll be called cool after me. You know, that's all, that's all I want. I just want a stadium named after me. Is that is that too much to ask? Well, you know, it could be. Either way, welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 2. And League 2 is bloody easy. It's so easy. It's Honestly, this is easier than the National League. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So, you were last here for the Accrington Stanley game. The first game of the season where we won with Mark Mason and Tony Russell scoring the goals in that. Well, we followed up with a 2-0 win at home to Oldham. Turiak sent off in the 61st minute, thinking, oh no, this is rubbish. But no, after that, Josh Coley and Mark Mason both score goals. Uh, Turiak sent off, so it went back to a 4-4-2. And then we just hit them on the counter-attack twice, very effectively, got the two goals. It was wonderful. Another three points on the board. We then played Crew away from home. A 0-0 draw there. Um, a decent result away from home against Crew, who are a decent side, to be fair. So I was very pleased with that. Another clean sheet as well, importantly. We then played Shrewsbury in the Carabao Cup first round. As you can see from this little... If I move my head out of the way as well, you can see the team sheet was very different. If we compare it to the Crew game, for example, um, it pretty much nearly... I think we changed about nine players in that game or something like that. So uh, we changed nine players. Not all of them you know, going to be first team players. So we thought we'd give them a bit of a run out in the cup at least to keep their match fitness up. And we lost 2-0 with Shrewsbury. I think they played a, a full strength side. So I didn't have any any qualms about that. We follow that up with a 0-0 draw against Forest Green at home. Again, a decent game. That another clean sheet on the board. And it was another point as well. Really, really good stuff from us. We then went to Doncaster. And we were, to be fair, Doncaster with a side on top. Doncaster had much better stats than us. If you look at the stats alone, they should have won that game. But we won it 2-1. Turiak scoring a free kick in the 90th minute from about 30 yards out as well to make sure we won it. Uh, Mason had a goal ruled out for offside as well, so we could have won it 3-1 if the lines would have been a bit, bit kinder to us. But that was another great win with another three points on the board. Another cup game, this time check a trade trophy against Leicester. The first game of the group stage. And again, we have changed goalkeepers and everything. Uh, Jed Andrew is our cup goalkeeper, although he did actually play in the Forest Green game because I forgot to change him there. So he played for Forest Green, the Shrewsbury game and the, uh, and the Leicester game. Unfortunate to lose it, to be fair. Leicester were the better side, but the chances we created for ourselves were much better. They just got very lucky with the goal they scored. It was a bit of a rebound. If anything, it could be a Jed Andrew own goal, but it's somehow not. Either way, it doesn't matter too much. Only the check a trade trophy. We followed up, though, playing Shrewsbury once again, this time in the league. And although Shrewsbury probably were slightly better out there than us, we did manage to get the win with a new player starting for us, Stefan Broccoli, perhaps the best name in football, scoring a goal in the 45th minute, with Mark Mason scoring one in the 64th minute, making sure we won it 2-1. So as you can see, we may have lost our two cup games, but we are currently unbeaten in the league. What that means is, after six games that we've played, we sit third in the table. Now, I, I emphasise the six games we've played because for whatever reason, a majority of clubs have played eight games. We've had no games cancelled. I, I don't know why we have two games in hand. I don't know why we've not played on some weekends when other teams have played. We just haven't. Because if we had done and we won those two games, we would be top of the table by two points, which is mental. We're the only side as well not to lose a game yet, which is fantastic. So, I mean, I don't know how we've played so well. We've done phenomenally well. We're third in the table with games in hand on everyone around us, two games in hand on some teams, it has been incredible. The teams we've played as well have been good teams. I mean, we beat Doncaster, who are fifth. Uh, we drew with Forest Green. We've drawn, we beat Oldham, rather. We drew with Crewe. Uh, Shrewsbury down there that we've beaten as well, and so Accrington. But, you know, for a majority of the sides we've played, they've been up there. They're around the playoff sort of thing. I know it's only eight games in the season for most of these teams, but... You know, we're doing phenomenally well. Bury and Boston sitting 14th and 15th today, so hopefully more wins. But now that I've hyped us up so much and with any team not to lose a game yet this season, you can almost guarantee now that we'll lose both of them. I did mention some signings as well. We have made three more signings all on deadline day, which is the 7th of August. First of all, Jamie Belcher is back for another season. Of course, we know all about him. He was here last year with us and he's come back for more this season. Made one appearance for Walsall, but just did decide to come on loan for us. Um, hasn't played in the league yet, but has played both cup games and he's looked all right in those games to be fair so I'm quite happy with him uh, as I mentioned earlier Stefan Broccoli the person with 
potentially the best name in football has joined us on a free transfer. He was at Tranmere, I think, before. Yeah, Tranmere for quite a few years. Played in League Two. Um, and he was just available on a free transfer. Decided he wants to come for us. We need a bit more depth in that midfield. So he comes and joins us as apparently the best midfielder in the squad. I mean, I'll still say that Howell is the best player in the squad uh, and in the midfield. But apparently... According to our coaches, they reckon Broccoli is. And finally, on a free transfer from Accrington, Jordan Adeyemi comes in as our backup striker this season. Three-star current ability, four-star potential, decent attributes. Finishing could be a bit better, to be fair, but hopefully he'll be a decent backup to Mason this season. Has played a few games, uh, one game in the league off the bench and started both games in the cup, but hasn't scored a goal yet. But I'm sure it's just going to be a matter of time until he does. Scores a goal roughly one every three games or so, according to his whole history there. Uh, hasn't really had much of a chance at all at Accrington in the previous two seasons. But with two seasons with Torquay, he did have relatively decent goal scoring returns there, 13 and 9, which isn't too bad to be fair. But of course, Mark Mason gets a lot more. So he's always going to be our starting striker. In terms of the budget, though, we are overspending, apparently. Currently spending 9,500 per week. And I'm and I'm thinking like I don't think we are spending this much because if we look at the if we look at the the contracts here, I'm looking at wages. Of course, we've got you know some players on high wages, some players on low wages, some players on no wages at all, loan players for example, and a few players that are still on non-contract terms with us. But looking through all that, I just don't think that adds up. And I looked at my number twenty threes and think, look at their contracts. They're all on no, no contracts. No one's on a contract there, non-contract terms, no money. Where's all the money going? I'll tell you where it's going. Apparently. All our under 18s are on £110 a week. And I don't I don't know how that's happened. But there is what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 players on £110 a week. And that, that's a lot of money over 52 weeks. An awful lot of money. So the plan is to just release them, surely. Can, can we we can just release them? That should like relieve a lot of money for us. Um if we release on a free we have to pay 65000 in compensation, which their contracts end in June. or ju Yeah, June. We're in September. That, to be fair, that probably actually is just the amount of money that we have to pay over the course of a season anyway. So that is, so actually, first of all, what we're going to do, we're going to offer clubs, we're just going to offer them out to clubs for transfer for free. Take them. Please take them, anyone, for free. And then hopefully their wages will go and we'll, we'll save some money. Uh, we may be able to offer mutual termination of contracts, maybe. I don't know if that's... No, we can't offer mutual termination. So we're going to have to rely on other players and clubs wanting to take them for free, which probably won't happen. Either way, I've rambled quite a lot so far. We need to get into today's episode and play against Berry away from home. This is the formation we've been using all season that's worked so well for us. And this is the lineup that's pretty much played most games this season. So White is our, our first choice goalkeeper still, although Jed Andrew has played well when he has played. Uh, unlucky to concede some goals in the cup and things like that, but did keep a clean sheet against Forest Green. But I just think White is slightly better, so he stays in goal for now with a backline of Turiak, Gordon, Dan Happy, and Atkinson. Uh, Gordon straight away. I forgot to. I I'd usually do the lineup before I, before I load up the game, obviously, uh, for the episode to make things quicker. But Wakeley needs to come back on for Gordon, obviously, because Wakeley is our starting centre back. So Wakeley with Dan Happy and Atkinson make up the rest of that back line. Bowley in CDM with Broccoli in and Howell just ahead of him. Coley on the left. He's bit injured but should be well he, I've been told he's absolutely fine to play today's game so he's going to play today's game he's on my left Douglas Hurst who's been playing very well in training and actually I think he's slightly better match day performance than than Tony Russell so far this season he starts on the right and of course with only three goals so far to his name this season but I'm sure he'll score another 20 or so Mark Mason leads the line right then kickoff is upon us here today at Bury. They're sitting 14th in the table. So it's, you know, early indications. They're only four points behind us, to be fair, when you look at it. But they have played two more games than us this season. I just, I just, I don't quite know why we've not played as many games as everyone else. Because I don't see any particular reason as Coley puts us 1-0 up 30 seconds into the game. His second of the season. Another assist for Douglas Hurst as well, which is fantastic. Already putting us up 17 points on the board. One point behind Plymouth. Two points behind Cheltenham, but with two games in hand. Like... I don't, yeah, as I say, I just don't understand why we've not played as many games, but we just we just haven't for some reason, because nothing's been cancelled. There's been no cup games on weekends. I, as far as I'm aware, there's no internationals at our level, uh, international breaks, that is, so I don't know why that would be. I just don't know why, but it's happened, but it's it's fine right now, because it's not really affecting us adversely at all. Question is, though, how long will this continue? How long will we remain unbeaten in the league? Most of these players aren't really top League 2 quality at all. 
surely it's all going to crumble at some point. Not today, though, because we are winning 1-0 still away from home at Bury. The dream continues. A big 81 fans as well from Lincoln United today. That's fantastic to see. We, we took 101, actually. 101 fans to Doncaster. So that was that was pretty decent as well. Uh, Berry coming forward, though, in uh, one of the first highlights of the game, really. Nothing happening in the first half apart from our goal. Berry finally coming forward and grabbing an equaliser. Unfortunately, Jermaine Jarvis does grab the equaliser for them, but it's, it's not detrimental at all in the slightest, I don't think. Like, we're still absolutely loving life. Uh, Turiak's picked up a knock, apparently, so we're going to take him off the pitch for now. Uh, we're going to bring on Sweeney, who's been playing quite well. He plays the cup games and has come on as a substitute a few times. Um, as we said last episode, he's only going to be back up this season to Turiak, but when he has played, he has played very well. He'll probably be thinking, what more can he do? To not be a... Oh, Berry, come on, lads. You, you're not allowed to ruin the season that we're having so far. I mean, I did think, actually, at the start of the episode, where as soon as I said League 2 is easy, I will have completely jinxed it for this for this game. Uh, but we do want to get back into it. Push forward out there, lads. We're going to go on to a slightly more attacking stance as well. Berry, to be fair, have been slightly better in this match than, than we have in terms of stats. And to be fair, that's been... The story for most of the games, most of the games we've played in this season, we've been the side who haven't had as good stats as the other teams, for example. But we do manage to get the results. We seem to make our opportunities very well. And Mason put forward, saved by the goalkeeper. That could have been that. Could have got us the points in this game. But it looks like at the moment, we could be heading to our first defeat this season. Although Howell on the edge of the area shoots from distance. Another great save from their goalkeeper, to be fair. We are about to lose our first game of the season, to be fair, and it was going to happen at some point. Um, unfortunately, it had to happen on camera. That's not very good because we have won every game, uh, not lost the game rather, uh, so far this season in the league. But putting the result aside, that was a pleasing performance. We played very well for most of the game. I think just defensive lapses, but I, we can't be crossed because we've done so well so far this season and not lost the game. In that's, the th that's our seventh game of the season. That's the first one we've lost. If he'd offered me at the start of the season only losing one game in the first seven, I'd have bitten your hand off. So I, I'm just not bothered. I'm not cross with that result. Turiak's only out for one to three days, so hopefully should be fit again for the Boston game in four days' time. Uh, we're playing at home as well, so that should be quite an interesting game. Boston, of course, have done very... They might have done better than us in terms of promotions and stuff recently. They've had three successive promotions. I don't think we've had that, have we? We've had... We had two successive promotions in a row, but not three. We've had four promotions, but more than, more than four seasons, obviously. So Boston, to be fair... Have done better than us. Yep, as we thought, um, no one wants to buy our players, which is um, a bit of an issue. It might just be simpler to just release them all and just take the financial hit then and there. But at the same point, or at the same time, we'd lose that money anyway. We'd either just lose it now in a lump sum or by the end of the season in wages. So I don't... I don't know if actually it's really that big of an issue. I know I actually know what it will be because I, I, I don't bother with the under-18 contracts. I, well, I've just not wanted to bother because they're all rubbish, basically. So I've just sort of left them to one side and when contract renewals come up, I say to the assistant manager, you sort it out, lad. You sort those ones out. I do first team, you sort under-18s. But really, he's done me dirty there. Oh, very exciting as well. Joe Howell is set to become the Lincoln United leading league appearance maker. He's currently got 159 league appearances for us. The existing record is 160. Who holds that for us then? Who holds the appearance record? Matt Cotton holds the appearance. I didn't realise, but Matt Cotton, I didn't really play that many games for us, to be fair, if I'm honest with you. Um, he's still kicking around, playing for Brislington now in the Western Premier. But to be fair, yeah, I guess from here to here, he did play quite a lot of games for us. Right then, coming into this Boston game, I think what we'll, we'll take Turiak off the pitch because he is still slightly injured. Sweeney comes on for him then in that left back position. But other than that, I'm I'm very happy to keep that team the exact same as it is. It's been working very well all season. Got a look in my last game, but I still think this is the best team to take on Boston and hopefully pick up another three points. Right then, kickoff is upon us once again. We are at home technically. We are at Central Bank this season and next season while our new stadium is being built. Uh, Central Bank of course being the home of Lincoln City. So it's quite an impressive stadium to play in right now with Mark Mason. Very similar to last game. We go up 1-0 very early on. Mason with his fourth of the season from the direct free kick. Superb stuff and that puts us right back up to fourth as things stand. We're still two games in hand on plenty of teams around us. Hopefully we'll get a nice big attendance today. Last time we played Boston they brought a good, like, they brought at least 700 or so, not even 800 
to uh, to the last game that we played against them. So hopefully they'll bring about a thousand or so today as for this League Two clash. Howell on the ball on the edge of the area, putting it just wide of the post. Uh, opening highlights of the game though, very good for us. And the opening stats as well, also looking pretty decent for us as Mason comes forward once again. Douglas Hurst on the ball into Coley, who's surely offside there. He is offside, miles offside. But, you know, it's a nice move at least. And it shows that Coley's got some decent finishing still. So I don't think I've asked you, actually. I usually ask you at the start of every season, where do you think we'll come this season? I usually do that in the first episode. But I didn't yesterday. I know that for sure, thinking back on it. Obviously, you've got a bit of a head start now, knowing where we are and how our form has been so far. But where do you think we're actually going to end up this season? How well do you think we'll do? I still think at some point, like, we're just living in on, on cloud nine right now. We're riding off the confidence of being promoted last season and playing, you know, as underdogs in every single game. Everyone doesn't expect us to win. So we're just, we've got no pressure on us. So I feel like that's been in our favour as Mason looks to make it too, doesn't quite do it. I think at some point though, we will start to drop off. But I'd like to think we'll we'll finish around the top half, maybe mid-table, you know, the form and the way we've played so far this season, I can't really see us being right down near the bottom. I think we will be around mid-table and hopefully top half. But, you know, I think at some point we will slow down and fall out of the automatics and the playoffs and things like that. That shouldn't happen. But um, where do you think we're going to finish this season? Let me know in the comment section down below as phew, Boston nearly score. A lot more action in this game than the last one, definitely. A lot more highlights so far in this first half. But we do go into half-time, one the up. And, I mean, as things stand... Uh, we'll show the table in, in just a second as well. But if we still win our two games in hand, we would we would still actually go top of the table. So we're still in like a phenomenal position. So I I don't understand why we're doing so well. But I'm not complaining at all. Boston only bring 500. They've brought more before. They've brought a lot more than that before. But nice to see a big attendance of 1,500. Over a thousand of our own fans here today. Uh, which you know I think that might actually be one of the highest attendances we've had to be fair, so I'm very pleased with that. We are going to take Atkinson off though for Kines Carroll. Atkinson has not played particularly well on a 6.5 rating out there. Coley as well, not playing massively well. Um, Aaron Bowley is going to come off. We're going to bring on Lee Masters for him in that CDM position. Masters, by the way, has to be on the bench every single game because you need one homegrown player at the club and apparently Masters count as a club homegrown player. So he's always got to be on the bench. So by virtue of just being a long-time servant of the club, and a young long-time server of the club. He gets to be on the bench every single game in the Football League. Maybe a chance for us now just before the substitute's made as the ball comes in and Coley, who we were just slagging off basically, saying he's not played very well today, puts it in the back of the net for the second time actually because he did grab a goal earlier on. It was disallowed, but he grabs his, it was, well, his first of the game technically, his first actual confirmed goal to make it 2-0. And with 10 minutes to go, I can't see a way back into this for Boston. And as the clock ticks down, it looks like we are going to come away with all three points. Lincoln United 2, Boston United 0. It puts us, if we want to continue the game, I think it puts us sixth in the table, which is mental. Sixth in the table. We've also got two games in hand, which if we win them both, we would go top of the table as well. I, this, game, this game is so weird. Each season is getting better and better. And I don't think our team is getting that much better every season either. Like, I don't... It, I, I can't explain it. I literally cannot explain it. I think maybe a big part of it could be to do with, I don't know, some of this stuff. But it can't, they, this can't have that much of an influence, surely. Surely all the players being in a core social group can't have that much of an influence. Or I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm loving it and I'm not complaining. Long may it continue. Right then, I kind of want to push on a little bit with this season. want to get things going. So I think next episode, we're going to go all the way through to Cheltenham and Wigan. Wigan sitting 19th in the table right now. Really probably should be top of the table, but they're not because Cheltenham are top of the table. So hopefully there'll be two very interesting games next episode. So if you've enjoyed today's episode, please do drop a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I'll see you next time for some more Lincoln Loco action.